Hello everyone. Hound Dog with you today in the Brewster F2A Buffalo, the first production monoplane fighter in the U.S. Navy. We have completed our flights in the historic Navy carrier aircraft from the first three decades and are now entering the World War II Warbirds era. Today is June 15, 1938, and we are taking off from the North Island Naval Air Station, San Diego, California, and flying to the USS Lexington CV-2 for an arrested landing and free deck launch. Clear prop. Radio check, one, two, three, three, two, one, radio check. We are clear for takeoff. Controls are free. Power's coming up. Instruments are good. And we are rolling. Gear and flaps coming up. In 1935, the U.S. Navy issued a requirement for a carrier-based fighter intended to replace the Grumman F-3F biplane. The Brewster F-2A Buffalo monoplane won the competition against the Grumman F-4F biplane. The Brewster Aeronautical Corporation's XF-2A-1 prototype first flew on 2 December 1937. Early test results showed that it was far in advance of the Grumman F-4F biplane, although the F-4F would re-emerge later as a successful F-4F Wildcat monoplane. The new Brewster fighter had a modern look with a stubby fuselage and mid-set monoplane wings that did not fold. Advanced features included all-metal, flush-riveted, stressed aluminum construction. The control surfaces were still fabric-covered, and it featured split flaps, a hydraulically operated retractable main undercarriage with partially retractable tailwheel, and a streamlined framed canopy. However, the F-2A lacked self-sealing fuel tanks and pilot armor. Powered by the 950 horsepower Wright R1820 Cyclone radial engine, it had an impressive initial climb rate of 2,750 feet per minute and a top speed of 278 miles per hour. The aircraft was then tested in 1938 in the Langley Research Center full-scale wind tunnel, where it was determined that certain factors were contributing to parasitic drag. Aerodynamic improvements were made to the cowling streamlining and carburetor oil cooler intakes, and the Buffalo's speed rose to 304 miles per hour. Other manufacturers took notice of this 10% increase in speed and efficiency, and wind tunnel tests grew to be standard procedure in the U.S. Fuselage armament was one fixed 50 caliber machine gun with 200 rounds and one fixed 30 caliber with 600 rounds, both in the nose. The Navy awarded Brewster a production contract for 54 aircraft as the F-2A-1. Service testing of the XF-2A-1 prototype began in January 1938, and in June it entered the service. The added weight of two additional 50 caliber wing guns and other equipment specified by the Navy for combat operations reduced the initial climb rate to 6,600 feet per minute. Plagued by production difficulties, Brewster delivered only 11 F-2A-1 aircraft to the Navy. The remainder of the order was later diverted to the Finnish Air Force in modified form under the export designation Model 239. A later version, the F-2A-2, of which 43 were ordered by the U.S. Navy, included a more powerful R-1820-40 engine, a better propeller, and an integral flotation gear, but still lacked pilot armor and self-sealing tanks. The increase in engine power was welcomed, but 
to some extent offset by the increased loaded weight. While top speed was increased to a respectable 223 miles per hour, the initial climb rate dropped to 2,500 feet per minute. Both the F2A-1 and the F2A-2 Buffaloes were liked by early Navy and Marine pilots. The F2A-3 entered service with U.S. Navy and Marine Corps with significantly increased weight and reduced speed and maneuverability due to the addition of larger self-sealing fuel tanks, armor plating, and additional guns and ammunition. A total of 108 examples were ordered in January 1941. The Navy found that the added weight of the F2A-3 also aggravated the recurring problem of landing gear failure during carrier landings. However, the two-speed supercharged Cyclone engine in the F2A-3 was an excellent cruising engine and as such the F2A-3 had some value and saw initial service on the carrier Saratoga and Lexington. By this time the Navy had become disenchanted with the Buffalo and had become especially annoyed at Brewster Aeronautical Corporation's frequent production delays and the seemingly never-ending management difficulties. This order was seen more as a way of keeping Brewster's production lines running. They would eventually build F4U Corsair fighters and Buccaneer Bermuda dive bombers during World War II. Even in late 1940, it was apparent that the Buffalo was rapidly becoming obsolete. It badly needed a more powerful engine, but the limits of the airframe had been reached, making installation of a larger engine impossible. Soon after deliveries of the F2A-3 began, the Navy decided to eliminate the type altogether. F2A-3s were transferred to training squadrons for use as advanced trainers and some transferred to the U.S. Marine Corps. The Buffalo's only combat action was on June 4, 1942, when Marine Squadron VMF-22 flew from Midway Island to intercept a large formation of Japanese bombers and Zero fighters. 13 of the 18 F-2As were shot down by the Zeros, prompting the Marine pilots to refer to the Buffalo as the Flying Coffin. The Battle of Midway marked the end of the Buffalo in both U.S. Navy and Marine Corps fighting squadrons. Surviving aircraft were quickly transported to the U.S. mainland, where they were used as advanced trainers. The introduction late 1943, a vastly superior American carrier-borne fighters such as the F-6F Hellcat and the Vought F-4U Corsair soon relegated the Brewster F-2A to a distant memory. It is interesting to note, however, that the Finnish Air Force used the original F-2A-1s extensively against Russia, with 496 Russian aircraft shot down and only 19 Buffaloes lost, a ratio of 26 to 1. Ironically, the best kill to loss ratio of any fighter in the Second World War was achieved by an aircraft that is widely considered the worst fighter of the war. The Brewster Aeronautical Company closed their doors forever in April 1946 after the war had ended.